Hello again, and welcome to Winning with the Wrangler at Dick Powell's Leadership Corner, brought to you by Earth, Wind, Fire, Water, Training, and Development, where our passion is building leaders of today and tomorrow. The information on today's program was gathered by me from many different places and many different people. So if you hear yourself in our conversation today, no, it's not all about you. Now, if you're ready to have us come and do a speaking engagement with you, or you just want some more information, just give us a call here at 727-422-1833 or send me an email at dick at ewfw.org. Today's program is going to be all about leadership. Now, I don't take that word lightly, as you know, if anybody who's been tuning in. But I'm going to ask you a question. What's the first thing that pops into your mind when you hear the word leadership? Is it a boss, someone in charge, a decision maker, a power broker, or something, well, something that, that we probably shouldn't even put on the air here? You see, many times when people think of some leadership person, it's really not in a positive light. So when I asked this question of many of my own peers, the answers in some ways were quite alarming. Some of the answers were, I'm the boss. Do it my way or take the highway. Might makes right. They gave me the title, so I'm the leader. Leadership, though, is not about titles, is it? It's not about the letters before or after your name. You see, true leadership cannot be given, appointed, or attained through a job promotion. It is something that truly must be earned, that is accomplished daily, as part of living your life. The next questions are always these. <laughs> are leaders born or are they made? Now, if you've heard that question before, I bet you've already heard a lot of different answers. Now, myself, I believe that we're all born with leadership ability. Well, I believe we're born with that leader gene. I do think it takes practice, dedication, and intentionality, and a decisiveness to pursue it, though. Not everybody has that will. Not everybody has that decisive thought process of wanting to do that. But I believe we're all born with the gene. Now personally I never realized myself that when I was 11 year old Boy Scout I was starting my life long journey into this thing called leadership. It was many years later that I find myself sitting here for this radio interview that it all started to make sense. And I look back into my long ago learning and realize that it all started pretty much when an instructor stood before us and taught us the 11 leadership skills of scouting. Now I'm going to bring those to you today and and I've kind of moved them around just a little bit so they fit leadership skills of today. And they're still relevant. They're still relevant because I believe this is what starts all of us on that path. So let's look at it. The number one thing on the 11 leadership skills list was communication. Communicating. Being able to speak to other people and really put across a thought or an opportunity. You see, as a leader, you both get and receive information all the time. It's something we look for and listen to. You must be able to do both well. That's listen and give. You really need to learn to take some notes. When somebody's talking or so you're listening to some someone explain something, Make sure you're taking notes till you get down the details of exactly what they're saying. Ask some good follow-up questions to make sure that you are receiving what they're sending. 
If you're doing the sending, make sure that you're asking some follow-up questions and ensure that they have received exactly what you meant to send across. You see, this is where things get kind of jumbled up from time to time. Sometimes we, all of us, only listen just long enough to, what, give an answer. And that uh, destroys all communication. So work on that. I'm going to encourage that you get some feedback to make sure that the messages always get through that either you're sending or receiving. And I'm going to also say, don't give orders. You know, people don't respond well to orders. And well, I guess if you do, if you're in the service, but otherwise they just don't. Discuss things that are going to happen. You see, when you discuss things, people understand what your thinking is, and, and they can accept it much better. Measure your success in terms of the job getting done and the degree to which the instructions were followed. You see, that's the way to judge your communication. Did I really send and did they really receive? Good communications, of course, foster good morale. We have found over and over, though, that poor communications can bring numbing and dissent. Remember what happens in poor to communication. Here's what really is the terrible part of it. People go off and, and don't understand, or they didn't hear the whole thing, or they make up what they thought they heard, and they repeat it over and over. And when they do that, all of a sudden the misunderstanding becomes large and blown out of proportion. So ensure your, your sending and receiving is on a good shot. Communication. Number two, knowing and using your resources of the team. A leader must depend on what the members of the team can do as well as what he or she can do. Now, that's important. You see, in order to use these available resources, a leader must know who and what they are. They need to take the time to find out what's going on and what's going on with each individual and the team. They need to find out by observing, by asking other members of the team, as well as other leaders. When you are using the resources of the team, others will lead and the opportunity, the program, will be a successful result of not only your ideas alone, but the other team members. That's going to be very important as a leader. You see, this thing of knowing the resource, who can do what, is really powerful. We all have our specialties, and we all have things we do better than someone else. <clears throat> and when you're building the team, that's going to be the most important piece of your world. Let's look at number three. Understanding the characteristics and needs of the team. When this skill is used properly, a leader will give the other what they need to grow. By understanding the people the leader can oftentimes provide opportunities to the individuals in the team to not only grow their self, but grow the resources. Hmm. And this is not always what the, need, the leader thinks they need. It's oftentimes what the individual thinks they need. And it's the leader's job to provide that. Amazing. When someone wants to learn and grow, why would you hold them back? Each person has a certain strengths and weaknesses. Understand what those are. As the leader, you need to understand what yours are and find out those around you so that you can better work as a coordinated team. You see, when a leader understands the individual's needs, everyone benefits. When team leaders apply this skill, the goals of the organization will always succeed and rise to the top. It amazes me how many times that I have seen leaders not take the time to understand and get to know the individuals on their teams. When in all actual world, it's them who are putting it all together and making it work.
Something to think about. Number four. Now this one's important. This is something that you need to instruct into all of your team members. Number four says representing the team. <clears throat> now you see, in my world, everyone's a leader, right? So that's why I say this. This skill is, first of all, the leadership method in action. You see, team leaders take ideas and problems of the team members to the board or whoever the team leadership group is called. And then, and then, will bring back the decisions of that board to the team. You see, there's two parts of this. One is the leaders of the teams are coming to the, the leadership group, bringing opportunities and problems and also good things, by the way, and then taking back the information to those out and about. Now, why is that so important? Well, here again, it really means that success can be measured by each team member who feels that they are part of the organization's decisions. So if you don't bring back that information, you don't pass on what was decided or happened, how do they know? And so now the, the, the workers or the people who are working on the team members with you, all they know is you went to a meeting didn't come back and tell him, so they're going to make up their own story about what they think happened behind those closed doors. Not a good thing. So when you're representing the team, that means you have a two-phase thing. You're going to go in with a good idea or something that's going on, and you're going to get a decision made, and you're going to come back and disseminate that to everyone who provided it to you to begin with. Okay? It's two-way street. Number five, pretty big one for me, setting the example. What you are speaks louder than what you say. The old saying, do as I do, and do as I say and not as I do, just doesn't work. You see, people do as people see, and people repeat what people hear. You will lose valuable influence if you do not live up to the standards that you recommend or the organization's ideals that you instruct. This ranges from simple things like wearing the appropriate attire or to your behavior, both inside and outside the organization. You see, leaders, people are always looking to you, both inside and outside, and even on your free time. They meet you in the grocery store, they meet you at the sporting goods store, wherever. There's going to be an opportunity there. You see, team members need a model to follow. Their leaders may be the only good example they have in their lives. People do what people see and people repeat what people hear. Good thing to remember. Number six, planning. The core of, any, of every successful organization is planning. Planning is not a once and done thing. So many times we have gone in to work with, in, with individual organizations and they said, well, we've got a one year and a five year plan. And they did it three years ago, but they never revisited it. They never went back and updated it. And they, no one ever did anything to make sure it was even done. You see, it, this thing called planning happens by setting a strategy of a day to day and long term goals that include a start and accomplish dates. Also include who's responsible. Who's that person report to and what's the budget assigned to each part of that opportunity? You see, a plan is only as good as the metrics kept. If you're never revisiting and you're never making sure of accountability, what good is it and why are you doing it? Planning. It's a great thing if you put it in place. And then update it as you go through. Hmm. Number seven, controlling group performance. Now, I'm not a big guy on this controlling part, but let me explain that to you. You see, the purpose of this skill is to control the performance of a team so that it will be successful in doing its job 
and have some fun in the process. You see, I truly believe when everything's all work and no play, things just don't happen. But the play has to be involved in the actual accomplishment of the goal. This means the organization will need to run smoothly and has a sense of camaraderie. There's not a lot of silo groups fighting against one another. They're all working together for the same opportunity, the same end. Now along the way, the team members need to have some kind of fun. And they need to be in good spirits and become, I'll tell you what that makes. If they're having some fun and they're in good spirits, they become better team members and definitely build a stronger organization. There will be times when the leader has to do some controlling of the group's performance. And sometimes that means to stop a behavior from one or more of the people in the team of a negative impact on the team. Negativity can really spread like a disease throughout a team. One person can catch it and it can catch on very quickly and spread. So you need to watch that. It doesn't happen very often when I've, I've seen teams that are put into this, this opportunity where metrics are put in place and they're having a little bit of fun back and forth making things happen. But every once in a while, someone raises an ugly head and you need to do something about it. When you do, it makes everyone happier. And here's what I'm going to encourage you to do. Encourage the team itself to control itself and, and not depend on the leader to step in and, and do something. You know, that's a big part of it. But that's an instruction part. That's a, a letting go part of leadership, of, of letting others be leaders from the middle. Again, I believe everyone has that leadership gene sometimes need to be encouraged and moved ahead, but I believe it's there for each and every one of us. Number eight, evaluating. Now, evaluating in my world, I'm going to encourage you to do this on a daily basis for each one of those things on your list. Now, evaluating should be done both during and after each activity. Why is that so important? Well, it's important because the day of the activity or the actual act time is when things either go well or don't go well, but you know what goes on. If you wait too long to do that evaluation, people forget the bad things and only write down the good thing. And when we go to do that same opportunity or something similar, you know we run into the same opportunities and problems. So each activity should have a definite goal that is filtered through the organization's vision and mission. If that activity does not, it doesn't, should not be within that zone. A good thing to think about and have on your desk or in your world is something we call a lessons learned journal. That means a certain activity that we have gone and done, and we've done the evaluation. We know what went well, what didn't go well, what we should have added, and what we should have subtracted. And the great part about that is, is that you can pull it out when you're going to do a similar activity or maybe the same activity again, and, and look at exactly what went well, what didn't, and what needed added, and what needed subtracted. How much easier is that instead of trying to redo and rebuild the wheel every single time? It's a lesson I learned from the U.S. Air Force. But I'll tell you what, it's a lesson that every organization, if put into place, could not only save time and money, but a whole lot of resources. It's just a good thing. Now, we'll jump on. <clears throat> Number nine. Number nine is effective instruction. This is not a new method of instructing. This each one teach one we've been doing for years. Teams have used it successfully for a long, long time. The difference in this method is, is that we do not ever assume that just because we have taught something 
that the team member has received or learned it. You see? You see, the proof lies in what they can do. If they can do the task and instruct the next team member, then you have been successful in this instruction. And here's what happens. When that team member is successful in teaching the next team member, think about the pride that goes along with that and the investment that happens within it. The each one ter teach one opportunity effective instruction happens so well that you'll see it multiply. Now the key to this activity is to involve the team members in the learning process by giving them choices as what they can learn and by checking constantly to see what they have learned. Many times someone would come to me when I was at the head of the instruction department they'd say, gee, I've, I've been doing this for a long time and I want to learn something new. And I would always encourage them to go do that. My counterpart would say, why are you doing that? They're wasting time over there. They can be over here doing this. But the thing is, is the more they learned, the more they could pass on, the more they could instruct, the more. It was just more. So I never saw a downside in it. And leaders, there's no downside. When someone wants to learn something new, there is no downside there. Let them learn. Find out what they know. Because you're going to, there, there's going to be a situation that comes up and you're going to realize that because they went and learned and they passed it on, they're ready for that opportunity. And they might be ready for another opportunity to learn more. I'm going to encourage you to place the emphasis on both the learner and the instructor. You see, the instructor's job is to take and not only put it forth in the information, but to see that the information is received by letting the learner teach someone else. How important that is. So in fact, an effective instruction is probably one of the highest qualities of a great leader in my world. Number 10. Number 10 is sharing leadership or styles of leadership. And the responsibility of leadership with the responsibility of leadership goes the word trust. You see, the effective leader must adjust their leadership style to fit the situation without giving up the responsibility for the welfare of the entire organization. The secret is to share leadership, allowing everyone to join in and share in the responsibility without giving up the accountability as the leader. When we share our leadership abilities, we find out that there are other leaders just waiting in the wings to grab a hold and move ahead and, and be a part, a bigger part of the situation. Leaders, our job as leaders is really the one big job we have is making more leaders. And you know what? You can't make more leaders without letting people make mistakes. Mistakes are learning tools. Failures are learning tools. They're not a terrible thing. And I encourage you to go out and learn all the different styles of leadership because you'll find that you'll not just use one style. You'll use many of them within your day sometimes. Number 11. We're getting all the way down here to the bottom, aren't we? This one's called Coaching, Mentoring, counseling. You know, one of the hardest parts, I believe, of being a, a great leader is knowing when that you need to step up. You see, a leader must be able to counsel, mentor, and coach as the need arises in order to help each team member grow. There are going to be times that every team member is going to need 
that type of opportunity, one of those things. And you as the leader, I'm going to encourage you to find a mentor and coach for yourself. We don't do anything in this world by ourselves. And we need to learn to always go to someone when we need it. The most important part of this, I'm going to encourage you as the leader, is listening. Listening is the most key important to be in the moment for that team member. Many times it'll just be sitting there listening, letting them unload and download and, and just get it all off their chest. Now I'm going to caution you. Be careful not to just give advice. You know, if they just wanted advice, they would have went to their best friend. Someone would give them, would say whatever they wanted to say without really giving them the truth. So be careful giving advice. Don't, unless asked for. Instead, I'm going to encourage you to use questions to help the individual arrive at their own solution to their opportunity or problem. When we provide good questions, what it does, it allows that individual to hear themselves speak out the problem and actually speak the solution. Many times that that's, that's a helpful piece. When they're not alone, the little man in their head might be saying things that were not what they want to hear. But when they're actually speaking them, the solution sometimes pops right out and you can watch the light bulb turn on in their eyes. I'm going to encourage you to only provide facts in this situation. <laughs> provide the facts when asked, not opinions. Be cautious about giving advice. The good and important piece and the fun part about this, if you're doing this well, as the team member grows, they will be able to start thinking problems through for themselves. So the encouragement here is for leaders to become facilitators and not manipulators. Be careful there. That's why asking good questions is much more important than giving all those answers that you think you can give very freely. Let Ask the questions, let them answer them, let them come to their own decisions, and really encourage them to do things. If facts need to be placed in there, fine, well and dandy. But don't just do it willy-nilly. Let them do the work. You facilitate, don't manipulate. It was funny that many years ago I was taught how to manage things and lead people. That I was taught that you manage things and lead people. And I was taught that by, by John Maxwell in his 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. When we started looking at law number two, the law of influence, the true measure of leadership is influence. Nothing more, nothing less. I hope this is going to help each and every one of you run down through your leadership opportunities and abilities. Remember these 11 leadership skills, communicating, knowing and using your resources of your team, understanding the characteristics and needs of the team, re representing the team, setting the example, planning, controlling your group performance, evaluating, effective instruction, sharing leadership and for styles of leadership, counseling, mentoring, and coaching. I see our team time is kind of running out here. So on behalf of myself, Dick Powell, and the whole Leadership Corner team, we want to say thank you for being a part of today's program. Our hope is that you've received a nugget of wisdom and guidance that will help you build your leadership ability. Now, if you have any questions or comments on today's program, we encourage you to give us a call here at 727-422-1833. 727-422-1833 or send us an email at dick at ewfw.org. Or when you know that you're ready to have me, the Leadership Wrangler, come and do a keynote or speaking opportunity at your group, just give us a call at 727-422-1833. Send me an email, dick at ewfw.org. 
Go to the website, leave you a message, www.ewfw.org. And until next time, DW the Wrangler saying, ride hard, ride fast. <laughs>